with an unfortunate passing and more this is wrestling hub my name is john and you're watching the wrestling report before we get into the rest of the video make sure you subscribe to wrestling hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling also don't forget to follow us on instagram at wrestling hub official and follow us on twitter at wrestling underscore hub Speaking on getting over about her WWE return, Trish Stratus was asked about reports of being set to come back earlier, saying, No, everything has been pretty smooth, to be honest. I know there were little online rumblings, but everything happens for a reason. There are definitely a lot of gut intuitions going into making these decisions, and I think we landed at the right place at the right time. I'm excited where it landed. It's just enough time before Mania. It's the right dynamic, the right timing. The girls have the tag team titles unexpected. What a moment. Nobody expected that. For me, there was so much buzz about me. People forgot about me. Then I surprised them again. Everything played out really well, I think, in a way where this world can be predicted. Ah, we know what's happening tonight. I think we did it in a nice way that it's exciting and people didn't know what's coming next. Still, there is so much more that can happen between now and Mania. It's exciting. There is a good build-up now because when I came back for Charlotte, we didn't have much time to build it. Here, we have a nice little bit of time to build it into mania. When talking to Forbes, Trish Stratus was asked about staying longer in WWE if the women's division was treated back then how it is today, saying, I think so. I felt very fulfilled at that stage of my career, but I had to also go, let's look at what I've done so far. I had the most amount of championships won at the time. I had worked all the women that were available and were working in our company. I had robust storylines with each of them, almost. I felt I had a robust storyline with just about every woman, Jazz, Molly, Victoria, Lita, Mickey, you name it, we had our day. I just felt good. I felt really good at that point, but now you can just keep going on and on. I haven't worked her, I haven't worked her, there's her, and then there's the tag titles. There's this championship and there's that championship. The world is your oyster if you're a woman in wrestling today. During an interview with Chris Van Vliet, The Undertaker talked about his match against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 33 as he revealed, Yes, so I was extremely beat up, and you know, I had toyed with the idea of hanging it up. I knew it that year when I got to the Rumble, I wasn't going to be ready. I wasn't going to be ready for Mania, but I'd already committed to the program. Didn't know that, didn't know what we were going to do yet, I just knew that I was going to work with Roman, and we got there that day, and I was like, man, I knew I was in bad shape. And my hip, my right hip, which I had surgery right after that to have it a Birmingham hip resurfaced done after that you know it was just the right thing to do not knowing if I was going to be able to come back again and work anymore so there I was he was on the you know he was coming up and he was going to be the face of the company and it was the right thing to do and I didn't you know I'd already lost the streak had already been beat so it was the right thing to do business wise because I didn't like I said I didn't know that I was going to come back again I mean that all that hat the hat on the coat all that being placed in the was 100% legitimate. At the end of it, I was done. And that was my way of saying goodbye. And yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a plan or staged thing. And then I get my hip fixed, I get a call, and they want me to work with Cena. I'm like, oh crap, man. So I trained. I know I've given you more than you asked for, but it was like, okay, this is my chance for redemption. Because I was so just, if you watched The Last Ride, you know how disappointed I was in my performance. And that I put myself in that situation because I just couldn't fix physically get to where I needed to be for Roman and how important that was. And just as hard as I tried, I mean, I tried like a, like an animal, but I mean, my hip just, it just, it held me back and I'm not making excuses, but that's, that's the extent of it. So now I've got a new hip and I'm like, oh man, and it's Cena. And I was like, oh crap. So Vince called me and said, what do you think? I was like, I don't know. I don't, I haven't really, I rehabbed my hip and I'm working out again, but I had no plans of getting back in the ring. And so I said, give me, give me a few weeks. So I get a ring shift down here to Texas and I rent a place and I build this, put the ring in this building and I started training and lo and behold, I can move again. So probably the hardest thing that I've ever trained, not ever I trained, but the hardest thing I've been able to train in probably 10 years. And I was ready, man. I was my cardio. I trained for like a 45 minute match.
Touching on Taya Valkyrie's recent debut on AEW Dynamite and subsequent signing with the promotion, it was reported that Fightful spoke to Taya in early February, and she told us that she'd hoped to nail down a long-term contract in 2023. We can confirm that she's either signed or intends to sign with AEW and had informed other companies that she was working with about her plans. We're told that several companies were made aware of her signing as far back as February. She's still scheduled and set for April Major League Wrestling tape and intends to make those dates. Explaining why JC Jane was written off of NXT TV, Brian Alvarez noted on Wrestling Observer Live, I think what they did was have the match and they knew she was hurt and that's why it was rushed. Because they got that match out of the way and now she's going home for a while. I've heard that she's injured and will be out. During a session on Instagram Live, Nikki Bella revealed if the Bella Twins would be making their way to AEW, saying, That's the same. There's no hard feelings. I get because of everything in the past, especially the past maybe six months, it seems that way. We're not going to AEW. I've seen a lot of that because we are just there visiting Renee and Paige. I was like, I haven't had an opportunity to take Mateo backstage to a wrestling event, and when he knew Uncle Brian was going to be there, Mateo loves his Uncle Brian. Bree and I are like, we have to go see Brian. The kids had so much. Much fun. Asked about his future in AEW, Kenny Omega told CBC's front burner, I always kind of try to find my own way or at least try to lean in the direction of where my heart is pulling me. And right now, I'm taking one step at a time. And with this Winnipeg show, it feels like, yeah, this feels right. And what's next? I don't know because nothing has spoken to me. Nothing has told me this is what you need to do. The spidey sense hasn't been triggered yet. For AEW Dynamite, Chuck Taylor wasn't able to make the show as he revealed on Twitter, couldn't help Orange because I had emergency dental surgery on my dumb skull. I hope Greg got me a ticket for Shazam Fury of the Gods. With pro wrestling legend, superstar Billy Graham dealing with health problems, his wife gave more recent details on him, writing on his Facebook page, First, I want to apologize for not updating everyone before now. Between the stress and concern for my husband, along with me still recovering from COVID, it's been an incredibly challenging week. Wayne is still in the hospital. He had dialysis on Monday and Wednesday, tolerated it well. They've seen some slight improvement in his kidney function, still dealing with the congestion in his lungs and some heart concerns. But truthfully, as far as what the doctors are saying, the infection in his head seems to be the biggest issue and the most difficult to treat. He's also back to 100% deafness in both ears. The need for prayers continues. My hope is in God. All things are possible with him. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. As CM Punk has not been seen in AEW since the brawl from All Out last summer, this was said about his contract by Fightful, as well as the differences in contracts between there and WWE. Based on the contracts that Fightful has seen within AEW and numerous talent we've spoken to, there aren't any non-compete clauses attached to many of them. Non-competes are standard in WWE deals, with main rosters lasting 90 days and NXTs lasting a general 30 days. However, all elite wrestling doesn't seem to have any. When asking AEW sources about the nature of this, we were told a few things. For one, all elite wrestling doesn't generally release talent anyway unless there's a special request or a disciplinary action, so they haven't necessarily had to implement those. A non-compete would generally just extend the life of a deal ending. Non-competes can't really do that unless it's agreed upon by the talent. Upon some early departures, we're told things are largely a case-by-case -case basis. For example, everyone we spoke to in AEW believe that if CM Punk were let out of his deal early, it would be on the condition he not compete in WWE for a period of time. With a WWE sale looming for the company, this was said about WrestleMania plans by Ringside News. We are told that it's been pretty crazy here the past few weeks, especially with everyone in confusion about how few staff is being brought to LA for Mania. A lot more staff aren't going to Mania than are due to budget cuts as the company prepares for a sale.
in some unfortunate news former wrestling star jeff gaylord is no longer with us as his brother announced i am very very sad to report that my brother jeffrey scott gaylord passed away after a short illness he was 64 he was a member of a shawnee mission south state champion football team he graduated on to professional football where he played for several years jeff matriculated to the entertainment industry and was a professional wrestler for many years recently he was doing outreach work for his church and provided warm clothes to folks living off the grid on the streets of denver we miss him dearly however we are content with the knowledge that jeff is enjoying the precious gift of eternal life For WTVM in Columbus, Georgia, it seems that Marty Jannetty's niece was involved in a traffic accident allegedly hitting a person in her vehicle. According to the Columbus police, the wreck happened on J.R. Allen Parkway near the 2nd Avenue exit. The pedestrian was taken to a Columbus hospital where his condition remains critical. Officials are advising that drivers avoid the area and take an alternate route. Police continue to investigate this incident. Marty Jannetty would post on social media, prayers for my niece and the other person not one to put my niece's name right now for obvious reasons. I can promise she wasn't at fault. It's an area where a lot of homeless drug users stay in the woods by road, but right now it's not a matter of fault. It's a matter of the best outcome from the worst tragic event. Her to keep her mind from getting way dark over this, the pedestrian to live, and loves for their family. Diane, that means you too. And thank all of y'all in advance. This is going to be hard on Nisi no matter what the final results. And again, the person hit and their family. Family. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.